So we've gone from 36 volt, 1000 watt, 3000 RPM, up to 48 volt, 2000 watt, 4500 RPM. Size wise, spot on. The only thing I needed to change was the, the sprocket. The one it came with was too big to fit the chain. So I took it off the old one, left hand thread. <clears throat> original one went to a switch. The new one gets its power directly from the controller with some uh, ring connectors. So, labeled everything up, lights, battery level indicator. This is all original and old. So we're using things like the original key barrel connector and as much of this stuff as we can. The original chain should be okay. If not, we'll upgrade it. Also, original controller, 36 volt, 32 amp, 1000 watt. That was the switch. Thank God I have to put that back together. And this is the new one. Much bigger. And believe me, it's a tight fit, but it fits. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to fit it yet. How I'm going to fit it yet. But we've got a bit more room, as you can see. Hard to do with one hand. But there's a bit more room yet. You get the idea. It will go in. Bit of persuasion. Carefully moving the, the wires. There you go. So this is whether or not I strap it down at the top or underneath. Um because I'm thinking about the seat. Might test fit it in a minute. So that's it in a bit better position. Sits up quite nicely there. This will, I'll make it line up. And it just fits tight. This slot, I can arrange to run it under the frame. Yeah, you throttle, easy peasy. Need to get the right size. I'll run the wire straight down and it goes into lost it now. Great. No, no, there it is. Turn handle. Turn handle. So when the battery arrives, it's not here yet. It has an XT60 connector, female. And you're probably wondering, how do we connect it to the controller? Because unlike the 36 volt system, it gets its power directly from the controller, the controller sends it. Simple, XT60 male connector to go directly into the battery. Two ring connectors. Uh, wherever it is, negative. So I'll use two little terminals like this, insulate them, and plug in. That's how it'll get its power. It fits perfect. No issues at all. Power cable's a bit tight still. So we'll run that to a new controller, which is a lot bigger than the old one. But it fits. Just, I'm just going to tighten it all up. The stuff I'm using, relatively thin rubber. I'll wrap it round and insulate and tape it and tie it up. So George, what I'm doing to his quad, so we've got the new motor on the back, new sprocket. I've wired in half of the controller that's 
show you difference in size. Old one, tiny, very tiny. New one, massive. And it just fits like, just. So this is gonna be for his battery. Wired it in, connected it in to the ring terminals. All these go to the various ancillaries. Some of them we don't need. These are gonna be wired into the controller soon and we'll do that tomorrow. New throttles on. Switches are all in, low, medium, high, or forward, reverse. I've got to wire them in. I managed to keep the original lights. I've got the grip on this side done. That's all secure. It's actually way more secure than it were. So tomorrow, I'm going to finish wiring the these. Basically fit it. Plug in what I can. It's not exactly easy though. These are the original uh, brake cut off switches. You might not need them. Lights. And I think then we're all right. Yeah, it's coming on. Okay, so batteries here. As you can see, XT60 female plug. And part of the problem has been um, wiring this in safely into the controller. So we've got XT60 male, and it has ring terminal on the negative up to ring terminal that goes into controller. And that's all wrapped up in here with some thick rubber and the insulating tape. Now what I did for extra safety is this is spade terminal that goes into a 50 amp fuse that's in there all secure it comes out of the fuse using a spade terminal into a ring terminal that is in here which then goes up to the controller if there's going to be an issue it's going to be here because this is where where we've got positive into spade terminal, into a 50 amp fuse, rated for 48 volts, out of the fuse, using a spade, into a ring, into the controller. So, this wraps. Right, a few little crackles as I popped it in. Here we go. Okay. Might have to put some shims on that. Keep that on there. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Okay, next job. I'll have to shim it up. Yeah. Look. Made it up. It flicked the chain off because it doesn't. The motor doesn't sit right. You see. So I need to drill some holes in this black metal down here. The major issue I had was the chain coming off. That was done by not drilling, but reseating the motor. I took it off, repositioned it, and I had just enough room to make sure that the chain didn't come off, which it doesn't now. Then, which I didn't video, um, it started responding really in a weird way. It would reverse extremely quickly I was able to amend the speeds, low, medium, uh, sorry, low, high, medium, and that would correspond to the speed in reverse. Well, we don't want it doing nearly 30 miles an hour in reverse. And then when I flipped it forward, this would no longer affect the speed of the motor and it would just go quite slowly. And um, that was 
a bone of contention for a while. Anyway, this is how I fixed it. Okay, finally fixed the issue. The motor was spinning in reverse very, very quickly. And when you put it forward, very slow. So, I tried lots of things like changing the motor phase wires down here. Made no difference, it would just judder like this. Didn't work. Tried taking the axle off, spinning this round so I could mount the motor the other way around. Didn't work, couldn't mount the brake. What I did was go online and realized that if we look carefully, we can see I'm just looking at which one I flipped yes yellow and green so so if you look there I used a little screwdriver to take this these two pins out the yellow and the green swap them around then it still wouldn't work, but the whole sensors I then changed. Green to green, blue to yellow, blue to yellow. And now it works perfectly. So I'm going to put it all back together and we'll give it a test run. But that's what you need to do if you've got an electric scooter, go kart, quad, and it's going slowing first, sorry, slowing forward. Fast and reverse, get your horse sensors, flip the yellow and the green inside, it's really easy to do. Just push against those tabs and it will come out. And then flip your horse sensors in your terminal block.